and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on US real estate equities, or REITs, and my guest is Bob Jenkins, Global Head of Lipper Research at Refinitiv. Well, the coronavirus pandemic was expected to change the ways Americans lived, shopped and worked, and what buildings they did it in. Corporate America is downsizing its real estate footprint as employees work from home, with office demand in key markets like Manhattan forecast to fall by 15%. And with shopping malls also declining in popularity, real estate investment trusts that own commercial and office property looked like an unfashionable investment in 2020. But this earnings season, roughly 95% of equity REITs beat consensus estimates, while nine have raised dividends in the last week. The S&P 500 Real Estate Index is up 28% year-to-date. That's partly because a lot of its key constituents, as seen here, are invested in defensive sectors like cell towers, data centres and apartment complexes, more than in commercial property and office blocks. But should you be putting your money into bricks and mortar? For more on this, I'm now joined by Bob Jenkins, Global Head of Lipper Research at Refinitiv. Hello, Bob. Thanks for joining us. Uh, So to start with, why have REITs done so well thus far this year? You know, first, Elena, it's important to put this into perspective. Uh, REITs have been the highest returning asset class over the past 20 years at around 10% annual returns, while the S&P is in fifth place at about 7.5%. So it's kind of a perennial winner. However, during the pandemic, pandemic, mostly sentiment-driven fears crept into the market and REITs found themselves as the worst performing asset class in 2020, trailing even the dismal showing of commodities. Uh, People were basically acting upon what they were seeing in the news about all things related to commercial real estate essentially shutting down, Uh, but they were only half right. Access to buildings may have shut down to a degree, but lease contracts and rent payments in commercial spaces continued for the most part. So REITs really had nowhere to go but up heading into the end of 2020 when that reopening trade began taking hold. And they've now gone from worst to essentially first, as you mentioned, evening up almost with energy as the top performing sector so far this year, returning just shy of, of 30%. So you know, if you think about it, the key to REITs is, is really twofold. They tend to be uncorrelated to other asset classes. So they deliver exceptional dividend uh, income and diversity at the same time. So these things kind of act very nicely together, particularly for an aging demographic here in the U.S. that needs that income and that diversification uh, during this stretch of historically low interest rates. But as we start to get a clearer picture on whether work from home will last, what's your outlook for the office property sector? You know, I think uh, property focused REITs, they're really just one of some 13 subgroups. But when you think about the four kind of major groups of, of REITs, Um, They've all been impacted in different ways by this pandemic. Retail spaces, they were already dealing with online shopping headwinds. Residential complex are doing pretty good depending on location, you know, and given to low housing inventories and such. Industrial properties have been up and down a bit, but largely back on track. But it's the office space, to your point, that I think saw some of the most dramatic and perhaps lasting impacts from the pandemic. So this work from home movement has created a permanent change uh, in these spaces for two primary reasons worker safety and productivity. So, you know, as an upside, if it's possible, say from from the pandemic, uh, companies have seen a market rise in worker productivity driven largely from the work from home movement. Spending less time commuting and traveling in general have made workers more productive. So, you know, having your your office in your home seems to inspire a higher degree of focus and attentiveness to work, apparently. Uh, And in fact, some people are having trouble separating themselves from their work, which is another story altogether. But the net net is that more is getting done and companies are, of course, happy with that. And of course, there's also worker safety. And many firms have already started to scale back on their plans to have workers return to the offices this coming fall, due primarily to the Delta variant. And in most cases, none of those plans were 100% return anyway. So this coupled with the fact that many companies are now embracing work from home, uh, there are widespread plans in corporate America to shrink their real estate footprint. So I think it's going to take quite some time of strong economic growth and a more complete control of the pandemic in order to begin pushing demand back up in the office space. Now, concern, of course, is growing about inflation in the U.S. So how effective are REITs as an inflation hedge? Yeah, again, that low correlation aspect of REITs makes them an excellent diversifier in any cycle. But when it comes to inflationary and rising rate environments, they they have two major benefits going for them. 
Uh, one, they're comprised of both real assets in the form of brick and mortar buildings at their core, and, and they're also generating the income stream off of those assets. So, you know, typically in the form of rent and lease payments. And both of these attributes of REITs generally rise as prices rise. So the overall value of the properties, as well as the income stream coming off of those assets, uh, tend to rise during inflationary periods. One would argue, though, rising rate environments can have negative impacts on the valuation of real property. But rising rates as a result of central bank intervention to slow and cool a growing economy tends to mean that demand for commercial spaces are rising and rents again in those spaces are rising as well. So uh, once again, the total return for REITs has a tendency to rise higher. So as a result, over time, REITs have tended to stay positive and generally outpace the S&P 500 during periods of both inflation and rising rates. Now, you've gone into this a bit already, but of course, all parts of the REIT market are not equal at the moment, with office property perhaps uh, struggling the most. So which parts make the best investments? We know right now, I think the residential spaces and the industrial spaces are probably the better investments. I think the, the jury's still out a little bit on retail spaces. If you think about, again, shopping malls have already been in decline for many years prior to the pandemic, this just seemed to exacerbate and even further embolden trends of people using online retailers for their shopping. But at the same time, we're having a massive housing shortage here in the US. So residential uh, complexes, if you will, multi-unit homes and, and buildings are still going to be in very high demand. And I don't see that, that ebbing anytime soon. And of course, industrial properties, as we are kind of kicking back up our manufacturing here in the US, um, those are going to do pretty well as well. So if you can focus on uh, particularly residential and industrial, maybe dial back a bit on retail and office, uh, you might be in good shape. Thanks so much for that. That was Bob Jenkins, Global Head of Lipper Research at Refinitiv. Well, before I go, here are some of the top stories moving the real estate sector. Google says employees who don't go back to the office could lose pay in a move that could set a precedent across Silicon Valley. Facebook and Twitter have already cut wages for employees who moved to cheaper locations, but an internal Google pay calculator seen by Reuters shows that staff who live outside major cities could see their salaries fall by 25% if they don't go back to commuting. Meanwhile, the world's biggest workspace provider, IWG, the company formerly known as Regus, says it's experienced a very strong recovery in meeting room and day office usage in the second quarter as businesses adopt new hybrid working patterns. The company has more than 3,300 locations across 110 countries, some of which are now being badly hit by the Delta variant. And it did say the pace of the rebound has proved slower than originally anticipated. And finally, a federal judge could block the Biden administration's new eviction ban, which was extended last week until October 3rd. It covers areas with high levels of COVID-19 transmission. That's about 80 percent of U.S. counties at the moment. The National Apartment Association, which manages nearly 10 million rental units, has sued the government for billions of dollars in unpaid rent. More than 15 million Americans are behind on their rent. And that's your roundup of the real estate sector. I'm Elena Casas, and this is Reuters.